found this 7500 watt electric kiln on Kijiji for only 50 bucks. Um, but it needed some new elements and I decided I was going to upgrade it to use a pit controller and two 50 amp rated solid state relays. The only thing with that is that they put out quite a bit of heat. So instead of, I guess I could have bought a couple of uh, heat sinks for, they range about 30, 40 bucks each. Um, but since I already had a foundry, I decided I was going to make my own. I used two, uh, two by fours blocks, made the mold and cast the blanks. And then the next thing I had to do is uh, machine them down to make them all look, look nice and pretty. My son decided he wanted to come and help me and uh, bring his McDonald's toy for me to cast as well. So here I'm uh, lifting out the uh, crucible of melted um, aluminum. It's about 15 pounds. The crucible, I ended up redoing it after, well, I used it for four or five years and it served me very well, but uh, it did start to leak after uh, after a while. And so I got me a new one, but this one still, it's, it's yeah, full to the brim. I think it's about 15 pounds in total. And I've good. never had any issues running into capacity uh, problems, not having enough aluminum. So as you can see here, I have a quite a large riser because I the, the part is about an inch and a half thick and I didn't want the, uh, the aluminum to shrink and create a big shrink cavity. So instead I made a, an extra yeah. reservoir to, um, to grab off. the metal so from for the part below. It worked out really, really well. I only had about a sixteenth of an inch of a shrink cavity and uh, that easily machined out. And uh, you'll see me uh, setting it up in the next little while. Okay, you can turn it on. After I pulled the cast out of the sand and cleaned it up, I mounted it in my vise. And as you can probably tell, the uh, three inch block of aluminum was pushing the limits of my little vise so much so that I had to take the actual ground vise jaws off in order to fit it. Once I indicated the vise, um, I used a 5 8 inch um, end mill to clean up the top and the sides of the aluminum part. This one, this part took quite a long time. And I think if I had a fly cutter that could span the entire three inch width of the piece of aluminum, it would have turned out a little bit nicer and not taken as much time. But in the end, it, it turned out all right um, because I cut the slots in the top, um, the little, as you can see, the, the lines that the end mill made um, wasn't really noticeable. So it, it turned out okay. Cutting the slots into my heatsink turned out to be way more of a chore than I had anticipated. Not only is my little mill way too underpowered with its little one quarter horsepower motor, but the slowest speed setting is 440 RPM. This is usually not an issue when it comes to using end mills, but with a three inch diameter slotting saw, it made for uh, quite a challenge. When I first started cutting, it actually worked quite well and I was able to do a full one inch depth of cut in about 10 minutes or so. Um, but after a few slots though, the blade wasn't as sharp and that's when the problems really started. There are a few things I learned for sure. Um, for example, my little underpowered mill, the three inch slotting saw just couldn't handle the deep cuts that I was making. Unfortunately, the only slotting saw I had that could cut a full one inch depth was a side chip clearance type slotting saw. And I ended up having to grind off those um, side chip cutters because they were rubbing against the aluminum and created way too much friction to the point where my little mill would just simply stall. 
The worst, uh, the worst thing though, was about two thirds into the first heat sink, one of my, my millhead gears literally stripped three teeth off its gear. Um, that forced me to take a one week break and fix the gear before being able to continue working on this part. But after I replaced the gear and made a noticeable difference in how well the slotting cutter worked and the harmonics I had experienced before were gone as well. So whereas it took me about six hours to do the first heat sink um, that ended up looking like crap, it only took me about an hour and a half for the second one. And that one turned out a lot nicer. So here we are about a week later after I wrecked the gear in my mill head and ended up having to remanufacture a new one. Got it all put back together and I'm ready to start now. I'm not sure how long this is going to last. I, I hope it's a solid fix, but uh, I'm a little nervous that maybe in 30 seconds this is going to break again. So I guess we'll have to see. Here I'm taking measurements so that the holes for my mounting screws will end up in the middle of a slot at the front and not like right on the fin. Um, use some blue Dicom layout fluid um, to mark the center line and then took the old piece of quarter inch aluminum plate that I had previously mounted on the solid state relay to transfer the holes to the new heatsink. After I drilled the holes um, for the screws, I took it over to the mill and uh, mounted it on a set of one, two, three blocks uh, and used my little Mitutoya uh, cheap eBay indicator. I think I paid 15 bucks for that thing uh, to indicate it just to make sure that the fins are parallel. You can see I had to go back and forth a bunch of times to, to get it right. It wasn't really crucial because really all I was doing is drilling some holes for the heads of the screws. So plus or minus 15, 20 thousands would have been fine, but uh, I tried to get it as close as possible. And then all I had to do is take some end mills and the uh, newly fixed mill head uh, to drill some holes through the fins uh, just for the for the heads of the bolts and that worked out really good it took like I don't know 30 seconds for for each hole and uh, you can see that the outside holes I had to make them a little bit bigger because for those I used metal um, screws or sheet metal screws The last thing I had to do was to take some heat sink paste that I bought on eBay for a couple of bucks and apply it to the back of the SSR relay and bolt the finished heat sink to the relay. Uh, that part was really tricky so I had my son help me and hold, hold the nut in the back and after it was all put together I did a test run and it actually worked out really really good.
After it was all put together, I did a quick test run, and as you can see, it uh, heats up really nice and goes fairly quickly. It took about 15 or 20 minutes to heat it up uh, to about 700 degrees Celsius, and the heat sinks were only about 40 degrees at the end, so I'd say this project was successful, although it did take a lot longer than I anticipated because of that stupid milling head. But I guess I learned a few things, and I'm happy the way it turned out. If you found this video interesting, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.